Shalom. Hit the like and subscribe button. Share it with everybody. This is Luke chapter 23. And the whole multitude of them arose and led him to Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ, a king. Can you imagine what we would, how many people like this we would have to be collecting up if we were to collect those who were perverting the nation? And Pilate asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answered him and said, Thou sayest it. Thou sayest it. I'm not sure how he said that. But then said Pilate to the chief police, police, priests and to the people, I find no fault in this man. For they were the more fierce, saying, He stirreth up the people teaching throughout all Jewry, beginning from Galilee to this place. When Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked whether the man were a Galilean. And as soon as he knew that he belonged unto Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who himself also was at Jerusalem at the time. And when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceeding glad, for he was desirous to see him of a long season, because he had heard many things of him. And he hoped to have him seen hoped to have seen some miracles miracle done by him then he questioned with him in many words but he answered him nothing and the chief priest and scribes stood and vehemently accused him and herod with his men of war set him at naught and mocked him and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe and sent him again to pilate and the same day pilate and herod were made friends together for before they were at enmity between themselves so Jesus brought Pilate and Herod together. Isn't that sweet? And Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people, said unto them, unto them, Ye have brought this man to me, as one that perverteth the people. And behold, I have examined him before you, have found no fault in this man, touching those things whereof ye accuse him. No, nor yet Herod, for I sent you to him. And lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. I will therefore chastise him and release him. For of necessity he must release one unto them at the feast. And they cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man, and release unto us Barabbas, who for a certain sedition made in the city and for murder, for a certain sedition made in the city and for murder was cast into prison. Pilate therefore Willing to release Jesus, spake again to him. But they cried, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. And he said unto them the third time, Why? What evil hath he done? I have found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. And they were instant with loud voices, requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed. And Pilate gave sentence that it would, should be as they required. And he released unto them him that for sedition and murder was cast into prison, whom they had desired. You see, this is how bad it gets. This is an example of how bad it's going to get. Jesus the Messiah, innocent Lamb of God, killed while a murderer was released. It's going to get that bad. Evil is going to be released. And Christians are going to be jailed, captive, and martyred. They will hate you. Of all men, of all nations, for his name's sake. And he released unto them him that for sedition, okay, 26. And as they led him away, they laid hold upon one Simon of Cyrene coming out of the country. And laid, and on him they laid the cross that he might bear it after Jesus. And there followed him a great company of people. 
and of women, which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning unto them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in the which they shall say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bear, and the paps which never gave suck. Now I know there's a lot of women out there who want to have children. But the times are upon us. If you see a peace treaty take place and you are not pregnant and you have not had children, adopt a child, foster a child, open your home to a child that is fatherless and motherless. Do not get pregnant. Woe to them who give suck and who are with child in those days. And Jesus is telling you that there's going to be a time and I believe it's coming up when it is more blessed to not to be barren and a womb that never bear because of the times ahead of seeing your children be put to death, be deceived, put you to death or woe to them who are with child and gifts up who have infants it's going to be terrible times terrible times worse than ever jesus said it's never going to be any worse than that then it's going to be the old saying it's going to get worse before it gets better is true If the better you're looking for is the peace of heaven. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains. Fall on us to the hills. Cover us. For if they do these things in the green tree. What shall be done in the dry? Think of how much wickedness is here now. Wait, we're not in famine. When we're not. Yeah, there's poverty. But we're not. The world itself has provision. It's just greedy people don't give it to everybody. Greedy people store it up for themselves. And think about how it's going to be when things are bad. There's already enough suffering in the world. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, where they crucified him and the male factors, one on the right hand and the other on the left, it said, Jesus, Father, Forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they departed his raiments and cast lots, and the people stood beholding. And the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be king of the Jews, save thyself. And a superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. And one of the malefactors, which were hanged, railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive due reward for our deeds. But this man had done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy, into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto you, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. Let's talk about this this thief on the cross for a minute, because he never was baptized in water that we know of. We don't know if maybe he had been baptized by John into repentance, but then he'd been, you know, accused and caught. But let's assume that we, uh, the information we have is right here. And then he's a thief. Guilty. But he believed in Jesus. You see, Abraham believed in God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. 
You have to believe in Jesus. You have to confess that he is Lord and, and know that he is the son of man. Now, this guy didn't get to see him rise from the dead. But he believed that he was who he was. And by asking him to remember him when he comes into his kingdom, it's the same thing as saying, I believe who you are. You don't ask somebody to do that unless you believe that they can do what you're asking. This man confessed with his mouth that Jesus was Lord. By this, come into your kingdom. You're Lord of the kingdom and I want to come into it. Now, we need to believe that Jesus was raised from the dead. But we have to understand something here, folks. We need to believe that the thief didn't because it hadn't happened. Ouch. I have a lot of pain in my hand. Receive your healing in Jesus' name. But he believed. And he believed enough to confess out of his mouth and humbly ask him, please remember me in your kingdom. See, folks, you want to judge people's salvation. Are you the judge of the heart? Can you tell if somebody believes? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. See, some people say actions are louder than words. Words, my friend, speak from the heart. You can't hide the heart if you're talking. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. So in my understanding, that is noon to three o'clock. Because the first hour starts when the first when the sun comes through the gate and we have first light. That's the first hour. It's also why I set my clock over here by the sun instead of like on my phone. And darkness all over the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened and the veil of the temple was rent in the mist. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. Now when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, Certainly this was a righteous man. Because, see, he understood. He's a centurion. He kills people for a living. He's at the cross. He's a crucifier. He knows what it takes for these people to die. They have to suffocate. And if they don't suffocate because they can push up off of their legs and take a breath, not to mention that there are nails to their feet and ankles. If they're still surviving because of that, they go through and break the legs so that they can't push up anymore and so that they suffocate. But this man saw that Jesus didn't die any other way but of his own will and his own timing. And he gave his spirit into the hands of God. I would wager the other thieves were still alive. And the sun was darkened and the veil of the temple was ripped in the midst. <sighs> Father, in thy hands I commit my spirit, having thus said, he gave up the ghost now in the centurion saw. It was verse 47, verse 48. And all the people that came together to the site, that site, beholding the things which were done, smote their breasts and returned. And all his acquaintance and the women that followed him from Galilee stood afar off, beholding these things. And behold, there was a man named Joseph, a counselor, and he was a good man and a just. And some had not consented to the counsel indeed of them. He was of Arimathea, a city of the Jews who also himself waited for the kingdom of God the man went unto Pilate and begged the body of Jesus 
And he took it down and wrapped it in linen and laid it in a sepulcher that was hewn in stone, wherein never man before was laid. And that day was the preparation and the Sabbath drew on. And the women also, which came with him from Galilee, followed after and behold the sepulcher and how his body was laid. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. Shalom, shalom. Share it with somebody.